What's up? My name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to set up a Minecraft fabric server for 1.16 and above. This video is going to focus on 1.16.3. Assuming you'd like to set up a spigot, craft bucket or paper server or of course a server for a mod pack, make sure to check the description down below for links to videos on those. So let's begin. To set up your own fabric server, all we need to do is head across to the first link in the description down below, fabricmc.net. Once you're on this page, simply look for the installation header and then look for the download here and simply click here. Then we'll simply download either the universal jar or the Windows specific exe. I'll be downloading the jar file. I'll tell it to keep and I'll head back a web page. Now we'll be downloading the Fabric API as well. This is a necessary mod for all other Fabric mods to work. Simply click this over here, which will take us across to curseforge.com. Then simply click the files tab over here and we'll be downloading the version that corresponds with the version that we want our server to be. As you can see, 1.14.4, 15.2, all the way up to 1.16.3 and above. Because I'm setting up a 1.16.3 server, I'll simply look for the latest version and then click the download button next to it. Waiting five seconds, Fabric API will download and I can ask it to keep. Heading back a web page, if you can't see the version you're looking for easily, simply hold down Control and press F, then type in the version number, say 1.14 and hit enter. Then we'll be taken directly to that version. So unlike other server types, all we have to do is simply click on the Fabric installer to open it up. We don't have to move this jar file anywhere as we won't be extracting anything from it. Then we'll see this over here. The first tab is the client tab where we can select our correct Minecraft version, say 1.16.3 and then click install. This will download and install the fabric client on your PC. Then to install the actual server, head across to the server tab, select a version, build number and then select an install location. This is important. I'll be installing it to my desktop into a folder called fabric. I'll create a new folder, rename it and open it up. I'll click at the very top where the URL is and copy it. I'll minimize it and paste that install location into here. So see users Technobo desktop fabric. I'll then click install and it'll download and install the server into that folder that I pointed it to. We'll get a pop-up about there not being a valid server jar. All we have to do is click download server jar and it'll download the actual 1.16.3 Minecraft server jar. Then right below it, we have some launch information but all you have to do is click generate to generate yourself a batch file and an sh file to launch the server automatically. I'll click done and then close out of it. From here, let's open up our fabric folder and we have some files inside of it. Because we asked it to automatically generate us a start.bat file and a start.sh file, those are both located here. Let's open up start.bat by right clicking on it and clicking edit. Then we see this over here. Something that I like to do is at the very top add at echo off and we'll be adding some more info to this Java run line over here. Simply verify that the name of the jar inside of the batch file matches the name of the jar inside of the fabric folder. So fabric server launch dot jar, fabric server launch dot jar. Everything's correct. Let's go ahead and give the service some more RAM. Simply open up task manager and head across to the performance tab, then the memory section. From here, we can see how much RAM we have available in our computer and how much is currently free. How much RAM do we give our server? Well, of course, the more the better, but you'll still need some for programs to run on your computer, some for the actual server itself, then some for Minecraft as well, if you're gonna be running it on the same computer you're hosting it from, and of course you'll need some headroom for other programs on your PC, such as a web browser. Because I have a ludicrous amount of RAM, 64 gigs, I can give it almost as much as I'd like. So right before this hyphen jar over here, we'll be adding some commands, hyphen capital X MS, space hyphen capital X MX. Right over here, we're setting the starting amount of RAM and the maximum amount of RAM. Say you'd like to give the server four gigs at the end of XMS as such, enter in how many gigs you wanna give it. So I'll give it four gigabytes and I'll enter a capital G to indicate yes, that is gigabytes. Of course, if you'd like to give it a specific amount of megabytes, simply multiply it by a thousand and add a capital M meaning megabytes instead of G for gigabytes. I'll leave it as 4G because that's simpler. And XMX, the maximum amount of RAM that it can have, I'll set it to say 8G as I'm allowing it to use up to eight gigabytes of RAM. Simply save the batch file and close out of it. From here, we can launch it up and it'll generate us some files as well as the eula.txt that we'll have to accept in just a moment. This will of course be a couple of seconds from now. There we go, closing out of it by pressing any key 
and opening eula.txt, let's simply change false to true to accept the EULA. Saving and closing out of it, we now have some other files and folders in here that we can mess with before launching the server once again. So server.properties contains some settings for our server, and if we scroll down, we should eventually see server port. This port over here is the port that's used to connect to your server. Assuming you'd like players to connect on your local network, you shouldn't need to do much other than allowing this port through your firewall and antivirus. If you'd like people to join your server from outside of your local connection, i.e. through the internet, make sure that your port forwarded as well as it's incredibly important. On top of that, if you're running more than one server from your IP, simply make sure that this doesn't match any other server that's currently running. By default, 25565 is just fine. Now that we've customized this file, we can close out of it and we can open up the mods folder where we can add ourselves some fabric mod.jar files. Inside of here, we'll be dragging and dropping the fabric API we downloaded earlier as such, and we'll be adding any other mods we want. After adding the fabric API into this folder, let's go ahead and add some more mods. Heading across to Curse Forge, I'll scroll down and select the fabric tab. Then at the very top, I'll select a game version being 1.16.3. Leaving it sorted by popularity, let's go ahead and download a mod that works on the server side. For example, World Edit. I'll click on it, and it'll be taken to a page with more info on the plugin. I'll head across to the Files section and download the version that corresponds with the server that we just set up. Looking down here, we see there's both Forge and Fabric versions. What I want is the Fabric version that is 1.16.3. Of course, that's currently not available, but most 1.16 Fabric mods work for all 1.16 Fabric versions. So I'll look for the one with Fabric in the title, 1.16.2, the latest, and I'll download this. Then all I have to do is drag and drop it across into the mods folder the same way that we did with the Fabric API. There we go. Now that we've got World Edit and the Fabric API, let's simply head back our folder and run our server once again. So let's go ahead and join the server. Simply opening up the Minecraft launcher, making sure Fabric 1.16.3 is selected, or of course Vanilla 1.16.3 because we have server-side mods. Opening up Minecraft, let's head across to the Multiplayer tab and join our server. To do that, either use the Direct Connection button or the Add Server button. I'll be using Direct Connection as it's just a little bit cleaner. Inside of here, will either enter localhost or 127.0.0.1 if you're running Minecraft on the same computer as the server. Because I am, I'll leave it as such. Then if you change the port from 25565 to something else, add a colon followed by that port number as such. I'll leave it as just localhost. Then I'll click join server and we'll be connecting to our local fabric server. There we go. Now that we're in game, Let's go ahead and op myself. So I'll simply run op space followed by my name, Techno. Now we're operator, I'll run game mode creative, and now we're admin and in creative mode on our local fabric server. Now, because we installed the world edit mod, all we have to do is enter two slashes and wand to give ourselves the world edit wand that we're familiar with from the bucket plugin. Selecting two spots, we can do normal things like slash slash set TNT and it'll build ourselves a nice block of TNT. From here, we can grab some redstone and finish our demonstration of how World Edit works. And of course, with that small demonstration aside, that is World Edit and Fabric Mods working on our server as you'd expect. So now we've successfully set up a 1.16.3 Fabric server, you can join it on your local network as long as it's allowed through your firewall and of course your antivirus. If you'd like someone to connect and play on your server from outside your local network, you'll need to go ahead and port forward as well. Information for that will be found in the description down below. If you'd like someone to join on the same local network as you, simply hold down start and press R, then type in CMD to bring up command prompt. Typing in IP config and looking for how you're connected to the internet, which for me is ethernet adapter, we'll copy this address over here, the IPv4 address, 192.168.1.20. For people to connect from a computer, say, next to me, this is the address that they'd enter instead of a local host. Assuming you'd like someone to connect from outside your local network, after port forwarding and allowing the port through your firewall, all you have to do is Google for what is my IP and copy the result that it gives you. That is the address that you'll give other people to connect and everything should work as you expect. In order to save and close your server, simply close your client itself and head across to the console. In here, we can either type stop and hit enter 
or we can do something I like to do to make sure that everything is saved and properly in order. Simply type in save hyphen all to save the world, inventories and everything else. After making sure everything is saved, we can run stop and we'll gently bring the server to a close. Pressing any key to continue, our server is now off. Of course, if you'd like anyone to join it in the future, simply make sure that start.bat is running and your server will start up as per normal. But anyways, that's about it for this video. Now you know how to set up your own Minecraft 1.16.3 fabric server and above. Thank you for watching. My name's been Technobo here for Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.